All right, guys, this is our video on the American Revolution. It lasted from 1775 to 1781. Uh, the key thing about the uh, revolution is this is the time we as Americans surprised the world and defeated England, who was the top military at this time period. So a little bit of background knowledge. This is just like yesterday. Uh, we keep hitting this information because it is super important. Uh, background knowledge again. These are all the causes of the revolution. If I keep hitting it over and over and over and over again, it's because you have to know it. It's not because I'm just trying to waste your time. Okay, so just fill in the underlying parts as we did before. Proclamation of 1763 established a border at Appalachian Mountains. Okay, they couldn't go further west than the Appalachian Mountains. The Stamp Act, tax on all legal papers, cards, newspapers, etc. The Tea Act, created a monopoly on English tea, made theirs do super cheap, and may force everybody to buy from them or pay exorbitant prices. The colonists didn't like it, so they threw the Boston Tea Party. The Boston Tea Party was America's response to the Tea Act, which was a version of civil disobedience. Remember, civil disobedience just states that, hey, we're arguing, we're complaining, we're fighting, but we're not causing violence. The Intolerable Acts. Okay, this is the closing of Boston Harbor. This is uh, England's response to the Boston Tea Party. So this is how they got us back from that. Mercantilism, the trade that benefits only the mother country, or in this case, England, by giving them tons of raw materials. Raw materials are like trees, uh, fish, anything that you could use to make something else, from food all the way to finished products like furniture. And place and have a place to sell their goods. So they would make everything in England. They would take all the excuse me. They would take all the raw materials from America. Then they would take everything to England. And then once they made it into a finished good, they bring it back and sell it to Americans. So you sell it to England for a very small price and have to buy it back for a very large price. Another was no taxation without representation. One of the, uh, that's where we didn't have any representatives in Parliament or the English version of Congress. And we decided we would protest that. One thing that's not on here, and I apologize for it, is the Boston Massacre. Remember, Paul Revere made that wonderful engraving, and that was a piece of propaganda, trying to get people to believe more that the British were attacking than the colonists were doing, that, and the colonists were completely innocent. Then, after all those events, we had the Declaration of Independence, and that's exactly what we did yesterday. We talked about the parts of the Declaration. So just in review, to, this is America's breakup letter with England. Uh, we Remember, we talked about the preambles where we, listed out, we started listing out all the issues that were going on. Then we listed out all the grievances or complaints with England. There were 26 different identifying factors in there. So we listed out 26 various ideas of why we were upset with England. Then we stated that England stole our unalienable rights, or rights that cannot be taken away. That includes life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And finally, we made a proclamation or a statement that declared a new nation, that we were a new nation. Okay, So we declared these United States of America. Remember, you read a little bit of a quote from there yesterday uh, and responded to it. So then we get to the war. Because of those statements from the Declaration of Independence, we were forced into war. Well, the first one that we had, the first battle that we had, is Lexington and Concord. Uh, most of us remember bits and pieces about this because this is an event leading up to Paul Revere. The British are coming. The British are coming. And um, what we had here at Lexington and Concord was our first battle. The Americans did win this battle. Uh, because they surprised the British. We were able to attack them and move, attack and move, attack and move. Uh, so what we always have to remember about the Lexington Concord is this is the first battle of the Revolution. And then this was also the shot heard around the world. Because of the events in America, England got involved. The rest of the European powers found out. And that's basically all we considered the world at this time. And so we had the shot heard around the world. And so everybody was aware of a giant war starting in North America. Now, following Lexington and Concord, things don't go so great. Uh, our troops tend to lose many battles because the English were the number one military service at this time. Uh, as they continued to go forward, we saw multiple times that the British won. They, uh, they were the number one military and navy, so they controlled all aspects. 
So we start losing multiple battles. And after losing so many battles, we ended up having such a battle fatigue and such a group of people that were just so exhausted. They had no way to fight back because they didn't feel like they could win. Well, that leads us to the events that happened at Valley Forge. At Valley Forge, this is during the winter. And during wintertime in the East Coast, especially where they were, you would tend to see super cold temperatures at all times. They had very little food. All they had were some, were some great military men and a lot of brave soldiers. These soldiers tended to be farmers or merchants or other groups like that that had to find a way to fight. They're taking on professional soldiers. And so George Washington is our general. This was the toughest time that George Washington had, uh, was training his men to be soldiers. Hadn't teach those guys completely all the aspects of war, and this was not the best time to do it. Uh, one of the things that we're, uh, you can see by this picture that there's a lot of snow. Uh, we're going to read a little bit more about Valley Forge on Monday, and there's a video at the end of the day, too, to watch and kind of respond to, that they had a hard time. There was all kinds of crazy stuff. Uh, frostbite, starvation were very rampant. But Washington was able to unify his soldiers and make them become a professional army to take on the British. And from then on, we started seeing things go positive for the Americans. Um, <clears throat> that leads us to, but, excuse me, but one of the things that didn't happen was we were not able to get more, co more countries in on our side. So we start to still talk to France, talk to Spain, talk to these other major powers to get them in. Uh, but basically they said we had to win a major battle, and that leads us into the Battle of Saratoga. Saratoga is forever known as the turning point of the revolution. America had suffered many defeats and been trying to get that uh, aid from foreign countries. Somehow, some way, we were able to win. Uh, basically we had surrounded the British and we were able to just encase them and they surrendered. And when they surrendered, France decided they would join us, join together with, with us. They joined the colonists after the victory and gave them an advantage. Now you had a young, fledgling military that, was, that would soon become a very powerful force. Also, you had the number two military and the number two navy in the world fighting along their side. So those two things uh, put together started tipping the favor in the in for the Americans. So it started to become a good thing for them. We continue to win and start uh, harassing the British and finally we get to the Battle of Yorktown. At the Battle of Yorktown, Cornwallis, the general over here on the right in red with the white poofy wig holding the sword, is the general and he is completely surrounded by American forces uh, and French forces. Literally they surrounded him in the middle of a uh, in the middle of a valley and that the French and the Americans had all the hills and had his back to a river. He had nowhere to go, so he had to surrender. And once he surrendered, this ended all the fighting and gave, uh, of the revolution and gave victory for the Americans. However, we had to come up with a peace treaty, and the peace treaty was the official end of the war. England would recognize America's independence, that was one thing they had to do. So they said, all right, we recognize these 13 colonies are no longer our property. Now they are independent countries uh, or an independent country of separated from us. Then the borders of America extended all the way to Canada in the north, Mississippi River in the west, and Florida in the south. So if you want to look at this map here, I'm going to step into the screen. This right here is the territory of 13 colonies. The Appalachian Mountains run right here. And so this was where they were able to go past, uh, or were able to stay at. We couldn't go past this point. Following the war, we are now extending our borders all around. So you can see we had a lot more territory. All right? So this is just a little bit of our key information that we needed for the American Revolution. So what I want you to do is finish taking your notes, and then take the quiz. Remember, we have to make a 70 or above on the quiz. And then uh, we're going to have a writing response at the end. Uh, so good luck and take care.